the fire started about 30 kilometers away from us over the hills and during the evening of friday night and saturday morning it got closer and closer and we thought it would never pass the hill and it did and it probably hit about 10 villages in the prince and nova district yikes okay you say that's five in the morning and then within, that's a, five few, in the morning. within a few minutes it changes from some, something that looks pretty horrible to something that's absolutely terrifying absolutely and it, at that point it was surrounding our house so we took the decision we took the decision to evacuate because we had visitors with us yeah. and they were terrified um we just grabbed our grab bags which were ready and we we left and as we were leaving the village which is up a, a kilometer hill um the bomberish were arriving good heaven so their sirens must have been blazing to to awake the bomberosh who, who, who may have been asleep or out partying or whatever uh, in a normal central portugal weekend and they were gathering and they uh, they managed to overcome that by the sound of it and it didn't reach your house um it didn't reach our house per se but the land all the way around our land and some of our land is burnt some of our trees are scorched we've probably lost um a couple of olives uh, a couple of pomegranate trees. Yeah. Um, our hoarders were behind the house, so that's fine. They weren't yeah. hit at all. But we actually have CCTV camera footage. Um, all the electricity went out at about quarter past five. Um, I think they turned it off deliberately so that yeah. there were no electrical fires. Um, and our CCTV, though, is solar powered. So we've got pictures of the Bomberos coming to our property and they arrived at 10 past six on our land. So we weren't in the centre of the village, we're on the outskirts. So they went to the centre of the village first. Yeah. Um, they came at 10 past six to our land and they left at 20 to seven. So they were on our land for 30 minutes putting out the fires. Incredible. I'm so glad you're safe. How terrifying. For, I mean, we, we were talking earlier on, Louise, about how lovely it is to show your part of the world to, to visitors. This is a little bit different, isn't it? They came for a, a lovely little break in central Portugal with you, only to be uh, confronted by a, the glow of a wildfire in the distance at five in the morning. Uh, how are they? Um, they were pretty traumatised, actually. Um, so were we. Um, and they went back last, well, this Tuesday just gone, a week ago, and they're still watching, washing the smoke out of their clothes. And that's something that nobody tells you. Even though there's a forest fire, the smell of the smoke every morning when we wake up, it, it blows in every piece of uh, wind that happens. Um, wow. A new piece of ash falls out the trees or off a plant or out of your gutters or off yeah. your roof. Yeah. And we'll be probably, until it rains, we'll, we'll be smelling smoke. Yes, yes, of course. Well, this is quite the insight into what can happen. Has, has this happened before in, in, in any way sort of recognisable like this, or is this the worst experience you've had of wildfires? Um, in our village, this is the first ever in 100 years. Really? Wow, okay. Yeah. And what, what's, know, that, what's that put down to? Um, if It could be a number of things. It's just... The, the, sp the speed of the wind, the wind direction was totally unusual that night. Yeah. Um, it came from north to south rather than south to north. Right. Um, if it was in the prevailing direction, south to north, we wouldn't have been hit at all. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm so glad you're safe and, and sorry that you and your guests had such a terrifying time there. Um, I, I don't know. What, 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 what can you do to prepare? I mean, you did everything right, didn't you? You had the grab bag ready. Uh, you, yeah. you knew what to do and you evacuated at the right time by the sound of it. Yes. Um, the only other thing we could have done is wait for the bombayers to knock on the door and either say we're safe or evacuate us. Yeah. Um, but our friends just weren't comfortable staying. And whilst we knew we could get out at that point because we're on the side of the hill, um, if we'd left it any longer, we the whole of the road from our place up to the main road, um, the trees went up on both sides. So we would have had oxygen deprivation for the car. And in the Pedroga Grand fires a couple of years ago, where all those people sadly died, it yeah. was oxygen starvation of the engine of their car that made the car stop. That's not something you think of, is it? Because your car runs on oxygen as well as fuel for the combustion. And if you're driving through a smoke cloud, that's going to compromise the vehicle. So that's something to be aware of, isn't it? Who, who would have thought that? We're just not thinking about those sort of things, are we? But that's no. an, an amazing reminder. 
um well you being here is, is a reminder of to get the grab bag ready be be, be aware be prepared and, and have a conversation about it right think about what you're going to do with the people in your household absolutely and and who, who have you got around you um so our neighbors both our portuguese neighbors phoned us to alert us so we were awake at that time yeah. um and if it hadn't been for them waking us up we wouldn't have known how close the fire was. So make sure you have contacts in and around you that if there is an emergency, that you can phone them or they can phone you so you know that you're safe. Get that system in place. That's a that's a really good idea as well, isn't it? And and thank goodness you've got such great neighbours as well. And we've got fire singed core coke. You sent me a few um, images, uh, some, some terrifying like this one, and others heartwarming as well. Um, so we can see how close it came. Sorry, I've, I haven't got these in any particular order here, uh, Louise, but perhaps you could uh, talk us through them. Oh, that, this is this is more fire singeing, isn't it? Is that an apple yes. tree caught it on one um, side? That's pomegranate. I beg your pardon, pomegranate. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. Good heavens. Right. Um, and that's your <laughs> irrigation system. What happened there? Yes. So we, we, we've had to relay it, but the bl dark black outline is actually of the 40 inch pipe that has just melted into the ground what yes sorry for 40 what was that is that the old irrigation sorry, 40, 40 millimeter the old irrigation big thick irrigation pipe yeah just I'm, melted I'm, into the ground without trace like like a vaporized sort of nuclear uh finish That's it. It. Good totally God. Good God, right. Okay, and you've been busy replacing it. Look that's, at that. It's sad to see. That's, it? that, that's the cork. Oak. The cork is now totally ruined. It won't be able to be picked off. Well, it'll be picked off and trashed. So. Good God, right. Okay, and uh, another, another yeah. more fire singeing there, right on the edge of your property. And thank God that's where it stopped. Exactly. And that was because the bomberos were able to get to the edge of the property and spray. That's why it's such a straight line. <laughs> Okay, right. Well, thank God for them but, as well. Right, you you, you must be uh, must have been hugging the Bomberosh and uh, thinking about how to to look after them in the future. Oh, absolutely. We've already set um, sent up some supplies to the the local Bomberosh station at the the aerodrome. Well, thank you, Louise, for being here this morning and telling us about this uh, produce. However, life goes on. Uh, has this? Have you? Have, were you forced to have an earlier harvest as a result? Is that what's going on no, here with you? No, we did these a couple of weeks ago, but I was just gathering them in and every so often you have to go through them, strip some of the leaves there and um, make sure they haven't gone soft or got black mould. So oh. I was just sorting through them yesterday. Right. Well, if you need an outlet for selling them, we know a really good guy. Um, and uh, you, you, you put to, uh, together a box with somebody who wasn't as fortunate as you were. Yes, a couple of our Portuguese neighbours down in the village, um, their main horta was out in the forest near a stream and it got totally fried. And oh. They've lost everything. And when she was telling me, she was in tears. Um, so I put down a basket for her, a box for her. And um, they've been so kind to us in the past, you know, giving us some of their produce. I thought it was the only thing to do to give them some back. But they weren't so fortunate. They've lost olive groves. They've lost their horters. They've lost livestock. It, it's all, a, yeah, it's very traumatic for them. I bet. And, and you know, know, we do cover, we, you know, we were talking to Jason Horton about the fires in the south uh, last week and the, the appeal that he's uh, started and others uh, have, have started um, to help people. You know, we see this, don't we? And, and those who aren't living through the, the sort of the remnants and the aftermath of this can move on. You know, people have their lives, don't they? But for, for, the, for the likes of your neighbour here who you took this to, um, this is their reality and the charred trees and the landscape. This, this remains the reality for people. Are you being well supported? Are local people be being well supported by the camera and, and local government? Uh, absolutely. Um, the... the the old couple who I've just spoke about, they live in the centre of the village, but their horta and livestock are on the outskirts. Um, the camera have already been down to help clean out their barns. So they are getting local support from the camera. They, they responded really, really quickly. There's a helpline set up to call in to um, register your damage if you want to. Um, so, yes, they are being supported by the, the local services. Um, EDP were out um three days after the fire. So they came out last Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, starting to repair all the electrical lines that were broken. Um, 
telephones. Um, there's some telegraph poles that are just hanging from the wires because they went from the bottom up. Um, they are slowly being replaced. We see them in three villages down that got impacted as well. So they're being replaced up towards us. So we know they'll be on their way soon. Wow. Louise, thank you for being here and telling us about this. I mean, this is, you know, when you're living in Porto or Lisbon or on the coast, it's, it's you know, you get a sense of this. Um, but to hear about your experience of it is, is truly sobering and um, something we all in some way need to be mindful about. Um, Jason, what, I mean, it's extraordinary, isn't it? Are you, are you, are you staying safe around where you are? Um, yes, uh, thankfully, so far this year. Um, there's, there's been a couple of small, smallish fires relatively close to us. Yeah. Um, uh, the one that uh, Louise is talking about, we could, we could actually see from our place, and we're over 50 kilometres, 60 kilometres from Proenza. Wow. But we could see so you look look straight down the valley, and we could we could see the glow of it all. Um, thank goodness for the bomberos um, yeah. and for neighbours. Uh, it's, it's an unfortunate thing that it's uh, an indelibly imprinted thing on the minds of anybody who lives in central and rural areas of Portugal. It's always in the back of your mind. Yes, um, you know, be really, really care. I smoke. But um, I make sure I'm really careful with my cigarette ends. And, you know, I think one of the worst ones is when people are driving in cars, flicking things like cigarette ends out of cars and yes. driving on. Um, but here we've, it's not been too bad. Um, but that's not to say I, th I think it's going to be a hot late summer. Um, it was quite nice and wet in the earlier part of the year, but we're, we're starting to experience higher temperatures now. For us here, um, we I've, I've got water points laid out around the property. Um, and if something happens, then my first port of call is I, I do what the Bomberos did at Louise's and just try and lay some water down in a big line. Yeah. Um, but essentially, I think the main point is have your grab bag ready and yeah. have a little bit of a plan as to what you're going to do and where you're going to go. Yes. And, and like Louise says, who you're going to contact because not everybody is always aware. And uh, the, the speed of these things can be frightening. As we saw, as we saw, this is what you, you saw at five in the morning, right, Louise? And then within a few minutes, it yeah. had gone from, from horrible to terrifying, basically. Uh, absolutely. Um, and that's just... I didn't have time to take any more pictures. That was sure. it, um, yeah. because it happened so quickly. And as I turned, that was looking north. If, as I turned to look south, the other side of the property, which is a pine forest, we we don't own it, but it's a pine forest that, that is managed. You know, they do come and clear the scrub. Um, yeah. Was on fire. It was totally wiped out now. And all you can hear around, and in fact, not today, but earlier on this morning, um, the chainsaws were out. People are already starting cutting down, trying to salvage what they can, yeah. collecting firewood. Um, but what was interesting is the smouldering carried on for a good five days, especially with some of the larger tree stumps. Yes. Yeah, I've seen this myself. You know, the, 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 it's, it's, res, it's considered resolved, isn't it? And the other thing we haven't mentioned, of course, is Fogosh.pt, which is the mm. app for tracking and knowing what's going on. And they'll they'll say it's in resolution. Uh, and I, you know, I'm, I, I wasn't rubbernecking or or being um, sort of mawkish or morbid and going to a fire site. But I've been I've been driven past places where it's still it's considered to be in resolution, but the ground still smoulders, as you say, for days after, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, Incredible. The, the uh, other one, the other. Go on, sorry, Lee. can I just say the, the other site I would call out is Safe Communities Portugal. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. Because that's if you don't get any leaflet from your local camera or your local municipality about what to pack in a grab bag or what the process for fires are, Safe Communities Portugal has got some good, um, very short pages to say what to put in a grab bag what to do in the event of a fire who to call etc so well said. yeah big shout out for them yeah definitely all about safety first david thomas and the team there um and uh, what do you do then in the aftermath of this well you build a schist wall don't you back to back back to something to take your mind off things maybe louise 
good job here. Uh, tell, tell us about the schist wall that you're working on. Um, yeah, we, we live on a property on the hillside. We've got lots of schist walls. Um, during the winter, we get some rain damage. Some of these walls are over 100 years old, 150 years old, and it's just stone and soil built. Um, but as they fall down, we repair them and replace them, but we use cement and rebar. <laughs> but the, the stones that have fallen, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle trying to put them back again. It is, and here, am I seeing an integral bench that's being a stone bench that's being built into this one, so you can have a gin and tonic after you've done all the hard work? Absolutely, and it's got a superb view across the village and the valley. So it oh. is because the natural lay of the the natural rock was underneath. So we thought we'd made we'd make use of that. The G and T bench. Louise, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, you know, hope. I mean, you we just have, you just have to be into the rhythm of nature now, don't you? And let nature do, take its course and bring it back into balance over there. I suppose. Absolutely. Um, one of my tasks for later on this afternoon is going out and looking at the waters, seeing what's been sun damaged, singed, um, yeah. what needs cutting back, and what can I save so it can replenish itself and give us some more produce. Incredible. Well, lots of love to you. I'm sorry to hear of the you know such a terrible time that you've had in the last less than two weeks. Really, all of this has happened, isn't it? So, uh, all the best to you, uh, all of you, the whole family over there. And um, I don't know if there's anything that we can do to help collectively as a community. Just let us know. Um, thanks for being here this morning. Thank you. Thank you, and Jason. Thank you very much for having me. Well, it's a, always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, 